So in this video, we're going to talk about escaping output within PHP, uh, why it's important. We're going to take a look at a couple of small things that uh, you should pay attention to. And then we'll look at the function in PHP that allows us to do this. So uh, we're going to look at this example here. You can see uh, at the moment it's just outputting hello and then a name. So hello Divya. And if we head over to the page that's outputting this, uh, you can see that we've got a variable at the top. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, what data we should actually escape. When should we escape data? And the answer to that is anything that comes from any external source. Now, in this case, we wouldn't necessarily need to escape this. We know that this data is hard coded in. It's just a string. Uh, this shouldn't change. So this is just uh, within our page and we're just outputting the name. So I guess in this case, we wouldn't need to. However, if any data that you are outputting to your page comes from any other source, so for example, your own database, uh, an API somewhere, a file, anything that the user is uh, passing into the application and that is being output needs to be escaped if you are outputting it to a page. So for example, you could have something in the URL that allows you to pass in, say, a name. And if you're outputting that data directly to the page, you need to be escaping this when you output it. Uh, we're not going to be talking about sanitizing data into your database or any other source. Uh, we're focusing now on outputting any data you've previously stored or you're getting from another source. So let's take a look at how this could be a problem. At the moment, it's fine. But for example, let's say a user submits something or stores something in your database with some script tags. Now, JavaScript function to just alert something out looks like this. In this case, just one is going to be output in a dialog box. So as soon as we refresh, you can see that we get this output. And you might not think this is uh, a problem at all, uh, but this is called cross-site scripting. And all it means is that the user has constructed something in such a way that some JavaScript can be run. And that means that anything can happen, really. You, your users could be redirected to another page. Uh, they could have cookies stolen. Um, and uh, you, they could forge a user login. There are various problems that can occur from using uh, script tags when you're outputting. So we need to make sure we take this into account. Now, we need to understand why this is actually happening. And the reason for this is that HTML is obviously made up of uh, these characters. So for example, a less than sign, a greater than sign, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a few other things that we need to take into account. Um, we'll be looking at the PHP manual as well to see what the function that we're going to be using actually does escape. So uh, if we go ahead and just refresh, uh, well, I guess we can re refresh the page and just view the page source. We can see here that we are getting these script uh, tags output just as normal. And that means that the browser is interpreting them and it's going ahead and running this JavaScript within it. What we need to do, our goal for this is to convert these, so these greater than and less than signs, to HTML entities. And all that means is that when we are uh, placing them on the page, they're not interpreted as HTML. They're still rendered as these characters. So you'll still see uh, script, 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 but they won't actually be interpreted and run. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So um, the first thing to take into account is the character encoding on your page. This should be UTF-8 in I guess, all circumstances. So we should be using UTF-8 as our character encoding. Now, if you're not too sure what this is or why it should be UTF-8, there's a really great site called utfaeverywhere.org. I would highly recommend you go ahead and just read through this and also have a little search around and just uh, find out more about UTF-8 encoding and, and what ex exactly uh, what's involved in using this. And that will give you a good basis of uh, why we're using this. And this really ties into the HTML special chars function that we're going to be using in PHP to convert special characters to HTML entities. So let's now focus on using HTML special chars within some kind of helper function in our application so we can use it whenever we're outputting information. So let's get rid of these script tags just for now and just return to the original state of this so we don't get that uh, JavaScript alert come up. And let's go ahead and uh, inside of this functions.php file, which is just floating around in this root directory, you can obviously place this where you need. We're going to go ahead and require this in. So let's require in functions.php. 
and we can now use any functions that we define in here. So let's create a function called escape. Now this could be called anything you want as long as it's convenient and easy for you to use every time you need to escape something. Um, e is a really good name for one because it's just easy. Uh, but in this case, we'll just be a little bit more explicit and call it escape. So within this, then we want to be able to pass in a string and we want to be able to return something. For now, let's just return string. So all we're doing is passing this in and returning it. And we can use this to wrap anything that we're outputting in this. So you can see the benefit of using something like E it makes it a little bit easier. So when we refresh, um, oops, so we've got a little error here. And let's just refresh here. So we get no difference at all. There's no difference in the output. It, it, it's just basically returning the same string. Now let's focus on the HTML special chars function. Obviously chars stands for characters. So what this function is going to do is it's going to convert any special characters, which we've spoken about already. So for example, a less than, a greater than sign, single and double quotes and ampersands as well. And it's going to convert them to HTML entities. And you can see the entities just here. Now, again, these are just rendered as you would actually see them on the page uh, rather than being interpreted by the browser. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, arguments we need to pass through to this. The first one is going to be what you actually want to uh, convert. So the text that you want to convert in this case, it's just what we pass through to this function. The second is going to be the flag that you use to determine the level of um, conversion for these. So commonly you would use something like ent compact. So, this will convert double quotes and leave single quotes alone. So this is uh, just sort of a standard general purpose. Ent quotes will convert both double and single quotes. Now bear in mind these will automatically do the less than and greater than sign in the ampersand. So these two options here, which are the most popular, are just going to be concerned with whether uh, they basically convert double and single quotes. You can also use ent no quotes, which will leave both double and single quotes unconverted. This is useful if you are outputting um, content within attributes. If you uh, do have problems with basically outputting anything within attributes, you might find that double quotes within that data is going to mess your page up. So uh, you've got a few options here and we're going to be using ent compact or we could use ent quotes. It's really up to you. I mean, it's, it's good to just test around with the kind of data you're using and outputting. So let's go ahead and use ink quotes just to um, convert both single and double quotes. So we just paste that in there as the second option. The third option is the character encoding, which we know from our page by including this uh, meta tag here that our character encoding on our page is UTF-8. This is so important. So as long as you have this defined on your page and you have this defined here, you are good to go. So we've now uh, completed this escape function. And let's take a look at how this uh, differs from uh, what we saw earlier when we added our script tags. So when we refresh here, again, we see no change. Let's just go and ha add a double quote here just to see what happens. So you can see we've got a double quote there. When we view the page source, we now see ampersand, quote, and then a semicolon. So that in fact is still showing on our page as a double quote but it's actually an HTML entity. So now let's look at a more extreme example where we might be vulnerable to an XSS attack. And let's do the same as we did before by alerting something on here, which could obviously be a massive problem. Now you can see the difference just by using this escape function that we've created. We're seeing this, but it's no harm to our users because uh, it's not being interpreted by the browser and it's not running this JavaScript within it. So again, let's view the page source and we can see here that we're getting less than script, greater than alert one, and then less than and greater than again. So although we're seeing this script tag, it doesn't really matter at all. We don't need to strip these tags. Uh, you can do if you want to, if you have a good reason to, but you don't need to use a PHP function to strip out tags in output. It really uh, doesn't matter. As long as you are converting these 
uh, characters, these special characters to entities, then you are all good to go. So that is pretty much it. There's a couple of points we've addressed, like the character encoding of your page, how to properly use the HTML special chars function, the different levels of converting we can do of the special characters to entities, and then more importantly, defining the character encoding so everything's done properly and nothing slips up anywhere. So a quick security tip there for when you're outputting any data from an, a source that you're unsure about, and you can go ahead and use this today just to help you prevent against XSS attacks.